<clears throat> now, suppose we did want to evaluate policies to increase social capital. Well, first of all, intrinsically, this is going to be very hard to evaluate. Think of all the problems we've had measuring it, or agreeing what is social capital. So it's going to be really quite difficult to evaluate the effect of increasing social capital. In economic jargon, which I have tried to avoid most of the time, our problem is this. We've got a very poor understanding of the production function. We've got a poor understanding of what we have to combine together, what inputs, in order to produce our output, our change in health. Now, we also have rather poor understanding of the production function for social capital. What do we have to combine together to increase the level of social capital? So those are two major problems. Suppose we want to evaluate changes in social capital and the impact on health. We need to know what it takes to change social capital. Now that has received rather little attention. A lot of the effort has gone into sort of measuring social capital, measuring health and seeing, oh, they're associated. But how do we produce social capital? And then the second one, as we increase social capital, what additional outputs are produced? What are the changes in health that are produced? And it's that information, the understanding of the production function, without that, it becomes so difficult to evaluate policies to increase social capital. One of the problems, I think, is the pervasiveness of social capital. It's everywhere around. So it's quite hard to identify discrete additions to social capital. Now, if we compare that to um, introducing a new drug therapy, we'll have data on existing treatments. We introduce a new drug and we can collect data on how things change. It's a discrete change. With social capital, adding to what's there, we don't actually have very good data of what's there. So it's really quite hard to identify the increment. As I've, I think, emphasized the last couple of days, well, last week and today, social capital potentially takes many forms. Uh, if we go back to literature on it, there's emphasis on networks, there's emphasis on relationships, there's emphasis on uh, social norms, uh, there's emphasis on participation in, in group activities. It's also probably a, a problem of multiple outputs. Social capital doesn't just affect health. It's going to affect other things. What about education? Now, I haven't gone down this line at all, but let's forget health and think about education. Is it easier to learn where there's more social capital than less? Well, one imagines it's much easier to engage in education and to positively add to your knowledge and skills in an environment where there's lots of social capital rather than less social capital. <coughs> And then, of course, a fundamental problem <coughs> excuse me, is the problem of attribution. If we do see a change in health and we've changed social capital, can we attribute it to the change in social capital? So we're back to our causation. It might be because of the change in social capital. It might not be. Some of it might be due to change in social capital, but not all of it. So there's a a raft of challenges that make it really difficult to evaluate policies to increase social capital. Question, yes, comment. Um, I have a question about the social capital takes many forms. Uh, do they differentiate between the creating a new social capital and maintaining an existing social capital? Or they all, they all, it doesn't matter as long as it's there. 
Well, um, I think we don't know. I don't think we know the answer. I think, I think part of the literature, the attitude is, as long as the social capital's there, maybe it doesn't sort of matter where it came from or, 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 or what. Um, and maintaining social capital may be just as valuable or more valuable, who knows, than adding social capital or having to introduce new social capital. It's a good question. I don't think we know the answers. But again, it's important from a policy perspective because you'd be engaging in a different set of policies. Uh, I guess I might comment that policy makers quite like doing new things. It's, it doesn't sound very exciting to be doing a whole lot of activities that maintain the position. It may be very worthwhile, but it's not as... Um, seemingly not as attractive as bringing new initiatives. But I, it may well be the case, it'd be a very interesting study, I don't know how I would do it, but it'd be a very interesting study um, to compare the cost effectiveness of maintaining existing levels of social capital as compared to allowing them to sort of deteriorate and then building new capital. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, as I say, I, I, I think that's a perfectly reasonable view. I don't think we've any evidence. But I, uh, you could write whole PhDs on this. <laughs> Wrong audience, because you're already, most of you, writing one on something. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's an, an important question. Uh, I don't think we have a clue, really, as the answer of it, just, to it just now. To, to a large extent, we're at an early stage in just beginning to try and understand what, what works, what makes social capital. I don't think we've got anywhere near being able to answer the question, if you did want to answer it or ask it, what, what's the more, most cost-effective way of maintaining or sustaining social capital? But I, well... Maybe the next generation of researchers are going to tackle that one. Soon, I hope, before all the existing social capital disappears. 